Hi everyone, I am Dr. Mbume Simelane, a guest gynecologist for Libris. Today, in our quest of an embarrassing our periods, we have asked you to send us your questions so that we can answer them. Today, I'll be taking a few of those questions and trying to answer as many as possible. So you have been asking, what causes a normal menstrual cycle? The first thing you have to understand is there can be a number of different ways that your cycle can be abnormal. First of all, it can be too heavy, so more than 80 mils, or um, you know, it starts causing you some kind of a symptoms like anemia. It can be too long, so more than seven days, or too little if it lasts less than two days. It can also be too frequent, so if you're having a period that um, you're having two bleeds per cycle, at least a cycle of 21 days. Or it can be infrequent, so if you're having a period of about 35 days that lapse without you having a period that would also comprise of an abnormal period. What are some of the causes then of all these kind of symptoms? The most common ones are obviously pregnancy. So if you're pregnant, you will not get your period. The other common ones are things like stress that can either cause your period to be irregular or um, completely diminished. Um, things like breastfeeding moms, they can also have a decreased period. Contraception, for example, the combined hormonal contraception will diminish the flow or decrease it. Other causes include severe weight loss, for example, as you see in extreme athletes, or somebody with an eating disorder that have lost a lot of weight. Things like organic disease, for example, fibroids, that would cause a severely heavy bleed. As you can see, there are a lot of different causes of an abnormal bleed. What is important is that as soon as you discover that there's something not going right with your period, please see either your gynecologist or a general practitioner for that matter. So what causes a period pain? Now during your period, what happens is the uterus has these small contractions that are stimulated by prostaglandin, a chemical that is found in the lining of the womb. Now, during these contractions, what happens is the vessels are blocked, so you don't bleed to death. But also what happens during this time is that the oxygen that goes into the muscle of the womb is then decreased. This in itself contributes to the pain. Some people will have very severe pains and some will have no pain at all. Some of the other symptoms that can accompany period pains are things like a bloated stomach, this is caused by the hormones that are changing, particularly the increase in the progesterone. Other things that people may complain of are feelings of sluggishness, tiredness, as well as a bit of depression, tenderness of breast, as well as swollen hands and feet. So what can you do during the period pains? There are a number of things that you can do. For example, you can start off with the non-medical, and if that doesn't help, then you can go to the medical. So under your non-medical, the important ones that work well are things like heat, for example, using a hot water bottle or a hot pad. Um, regular exercises will do wonders, but obviously not during your period, um, as well as eating very well. Guard against salty foods as well as caffeinated foods. Drink lots of water and eat lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. Under the medical treatment, you would start off with the basics, over-the-counter treatment, for example, the paracetamol-based um, medication, which you don't need a prescription for. If that doesn't work well, then your doctor may prescribe a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, things like Voltaren, ibuprofen, and so forth. If you continue to have persistent pain during your period, your doctor may put you on a combined oral contraceptive. As you can see, the combination of both lifestyle and treatments is the most effective way of treating your period pain. So one of the questions we got was, how does birth control affect my period and does it affect my fertility? Right, let's start with the first one. If you look at the different types of contraception, the ones that are combined, so it means they've got both the hormones, they will generally just decrease your period and uh, maybe cause irregularities but will not actually diminish the period completely. The one that is often called for concern is the one that's got progesterone only, particularly your injectables, the implants, as well as the one that goes inside your womb, what we call the intrauterine devices or intrauterine systems. Those ones, initially, they may cause severe bleeding and break out bleed, which will drive you insane, but it tends to taper down and regulate as the months go by. But also what would happen later on is that it completely shuts down your period. 
Of note is that this is not harmful and there is no blood that's accumulating anywhere in your vagina, your womb or even inside your abdomen. All it means is that the progesterone or the contraceptive has just thinned the lining of your womb so that there's actually nothing to shake. What is important to understand is that contraception does not affect the ability to have children once you stop using it. In fact, all the contraceptive except the injectables will return your fertility or rather your ovulation immediately when you stop using it. The injectables may take an average of four to six months before you get back into a regular cycle of ovulating and therefore ability to have children. So somebody asked, how does the cup work and is it safe? So a cup, you insert it quite similar to the tampon, but instead of it absorbing the flow, it actually collects the flow. It's also made of a flexible material, either latex rubber or silicone. There are a few pros and cons to using it. The pros, it may be seen as affordable because it is reusable, it is eco-friendly, and you can keep it in for longer, up to about 12 hours inside. Looking at the cons, it can be tricky to find the right size. It is quite messy when you're removing it because obviously you've collected blood instead of absorbing it. And also it may cause some irritation on the vulva as well as the vaginal area. The most important thing is obviously when you're looking for any option, can somebody afford it? Can they access it? And can they easily insert and dispose of it? Thank you everybody, this is all we have time for. I hope the answers have been informative. If you still have any more questions, please go to our Vagina Varsity. The link you will see right at the bottom. Please go there, register. There's a lot of information for you that will hopefully help you. Thank you.